Music. Pretty good, isn't it? So why are we trying to kill it? With advances in AI meaning that actually listenable robot tunes might be just around the corner, we're asking some important questions about the future of music and the possible implications for the people who make it. Yes, we still need music. But does music still need us? Hello and welcome back to BAFM 69 point nothing on the dial. Coming at you live from the heart of Trashland. Let me talk to you. With each passing week, another industry is sent into a fit of hysteria with the arrival of a new redundancy inducing development in tech that serves only to remind them of exactly what they are. Replaceable. AI has changed the world of work as we know it. And it's clear that this is still only the beginning. In the battle to come, many will fall, but there must be spaces in which humanity can still reign supreme. Sanctuaries in which human ingenuity will continue to light the way, and if such a place exists, then surely it is the world of art. But is creativity really as sacred as we like to think? Does it come from somewhere within, somewhere uniquely human? The place that most of us would call the soul? Or is that just something that we made up to distract from the fact that we are just fleshy bags of blood spiralling ever faster in the darkness, compelled by forces beyond our control? Either way, it would seem that AI developers clearly don't give a f about anything as unquantifiable as the soul. All they care about is doing whatever you do better and faster than you can do it. And in no art form has this been more obvious than the world of music. From fake Drake Spotify drops to new Grammy rulings on AI to the first true text-to-music generators, the last few months have been as interesting as they have been confusing. Now, as a man of the arts, I believe that humans will always have a vital role to play in the creation of music. Our guest today thinks otherwise. Is Nick here yet? Yeah, he's just coming through now. Oh, speak of the devil, here is Nick's songs, everybody. are we? Exactly. Nice to see you, Nick. Would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Nick Songs. I'm a credit card scammer and an AI musician. Now, Nick, you've gone on record as saying that the dominance of AI music is, and I quote, inevitable, and that anyone resisting it is a massive pussy. Do you stand by those claims? Absolutely. I mean, look, first of all, AI and music, it's nothing new. As the years have gone by, musicians have relied on AI to do more and more of the heavy lifting, and if that trend continues, well, it only ends up in one place. How do I get to do the thing? Oh, I don't know, it just sort of happens. Ah, there we go. Well, look, if you wanted, you could trace the roots of algorithmic music back to the 60s, but I ain't got all day. So let's jump in around the 2000s, when you really started to see the emergence of AI music plugins. These production tools made use of smart algorithms to assist producers in a range of what were previously time-consuming and relatively difficult mixing processes. You had the basic <laughs> denoisers that would listen to your track and take out the hum, and reverb producers to limit ambient noise, but then you had the slightly more impressive offerings. Companies like Lander offered AI-powered mastering services, putting one of the most specialist skill sets in the music industry into the hands of anyone with a spare 15 quid a month while Isotope came through with mixing suite programs like Nectar that analyze your tracks and then offer a full channel of tailored production effects from compression to EQing to reverb, which can then be further tweaked by the producer. The mixing assistants are cool, but they still rely on a capable human producer. It's a partnership. And I think a lot of people would probably question the results of AI mastering services, especially up against the work of a professional mastering engineer. But you're not really here to talk about AI assistants, are you? Generative music is the hill you chose to die on. AI composition. Lending a hand with EQ analysis is one thing, but taking the place of a writer, producer, mastering engineer, and a group of instrumentalists is something else entirely. Why do you think we're so easily replaceable? History. I mean, look, what's music really about? Oh, I don't know. Freedom? Joy? No. Money. The joy is just symptomatic of the money. Look, if you want to see an increase in profits, you only need to keep two words in mind. More, faster. 
make more music available faster, and if AI can do that, then why wouldn't it be the future? Well, I think that's maybe a slight oversimplification. That's because you're an idiot. But why believe me when you could believe history? You see, these days, music looks a lot like this. Or more likely this. But only a few decades ago, it actually looked like this. What the f is that? Too far back. It's more like it. Magnetic tape. Large, cumbersome, expensive. A nightmare to overdub, and pretty much inaccessible to all but the chosen few. But for years, it was the only option. Until... 1981. Sony dropped this. Sony PC-MF1. The first consumer digital encoder. It's hard to quantify the significance of the advent of digital recording. All you need to know is more, faster. Digital recording meant home recording, which meant that the art form of the people was finally and truly in the hands of the people. Suddenly everything else was starting to look real to real old. Yeah, funny. Sometime later, MP3s put CDs to the sword in the same way that they had once done to vinyl. Now you didn't even have to leave your house to shoplift music. More, faster. The biggest obstacles to productivity are the many limitations of the human mind. People tend to just get in the way. But as the smart algorithms get smarter, there are fewer opportunities for people to hinder progress. That is why AI composition is the natural next step. And that is where shit gets really impressive. Over the last decade or so, AI composition software tended to fall into one of two camps. One focused on a combination of smart algorithms and so-called human ingenuity to achieve results. It was more of a partnership. Products like the Orb plugin suite and a variety of beat generator programs offered musicians a starting point. You could select from a range of options, key signatures, timings, and then pick an instrument. These programs would typically then provide you with a selection of generated melodies and the relevant MIDI data so that you could take them forward and finish your tracks. Google Magenta did particularly well, and artists such as Grimes released tunes that began life in such a way. In the other camp, you had products that took things a step further. Programs like Juke Deck and Ava that offered complete track generation. Rather than just the jumping off point, they provided users with a finished piece of music. But they were admittedly a little limited in scope. Really, you were just selecting a load of filters and choosing a preset, a mood or a pre-recorded sound sample, and then the software would just generate an original composition based on your options. But in 2023, the game was changed forever. Google and Meta dropped Music LM and Music Gen, respectively. Text to music generators. Learning models trained on thousands of hours of the style and structure of existing material that generate high fidelity musical clips from text descriptions. Anything you want. As long as you can put it into words, you can make it. Uplifting major synth pads with a banjo solo. A string quartet playing Phrygian arps over Naughty's dubstep. Death metal key tasks on top of a f***ing bar band. And we're not talking about MIDI sequences or FX channels. We're talking about finished, produced, carefully crafted bangers. This is nothing new. This has always been the way. As the years go by, we continue to lean more on technology and less on, well, talent. And as for the voice cloning stuff, well, it's another beast. On its own, it might seem like a novelty, but think about what it means. The labels, yeah, they're pursuing copyright infringements now, but you just give it some time. They'll be releasing new Drake tracks a hundred years after he's dead. Look, while an eternity of new Drake projects is a genuinely terrifying prospect, voice cloning clearly has very little to do with the creative process. Now, if you want to write, record, and mix an album just to change your voice to almost Billie Eilish at the end, then be my guest. Aside from being pretty f***ing weird, it's also not really AI music, is it? The plugins are a tool. They allow people to speed up a human-led process, but they're functional. Production is, of course, an art in itself, but these tools still leave the more creative part of the process firmly in the hands of people. But the text to music sh I mean, it's starting to look like an AI musician is just anybody with a Wi-Fi connection and a vocabulary of more than three words. Can you seriously consider yourself an artist because you can type a few words into a box? It's called prompt engineering. 
And it is an art, thank you. An art? Where is the art? As a creator, don't you want to, I don't know, create? It's clear that AI has uses in music, but as a tool. What's up for debate is the point at which that tool becomes the driving force in the creative process. When does AI-assisted become AI-led? Grammys recently drew a predictably vague line in the sand with their new set of rulings. AI-created music is eligible for entry, but a Grammy will not be awarded to the AI element. So if an AI performs the lead vocal on a track that was written by humans, it would be eligible for a songwriting Grammy, but not a vocal performance Grammy. It's not exactly hard and fast, but at least they seem to be making an attempt to protect the sanctity of human creativity. And while I'm not going to pretend to understand the complexities of copyright law, this whole thing is surely going to be a legislative nightmare. But look, morals and integrity aside, the only legitimate test is to give it a listen, right? Exactly. Prepare to have your mind blown. Perfect, I love Kokova. All right, I'll bring after eight. Bye. Okay, new problem. Uh, this is, <laughs> this is Music can be whatever you want, right? It can be tight, it can be messy, it can be complex, it can be simple. It needs to be something. This, this is nothing. Each of these clips, all of the countless hours and money that's gone into making this work, and yet it remains a poor attempt at realizing what humans can do so effortlessly. It's completely devoid of fundamentals. It's a bad disguise. It's, it's kind of like listening to someone read poetry in a language they can't speak. Yeah, all right. Nick, what you make... Don't say it is elevator music, F you. But even if it was to get a million times better, there's another problem. Let's say this thing creates the most amazing piece of music anyone's ever heard. Who cares? So much of the appeal of music is the relationship between the art, the audience, and the person creating it. That's what we invest in. The problem with AI-generated music is that there is no person. A computer doesn't really harness the same kind of stage presence that can reduce teenage girls to passed out teary-eyed messes. They aren't going to get their mums to buy them a magazine with a picture of a f***ing Mac on the cover. How is anyone supposed to fall in love with a computer? Or the team of nerds behind it? There needs to be a human face. There needs to be someone for us to idolise, to name our children after, to emulate. There needs to be something. No one's going to cheer for an algorithm. AI has a place in music, yeah, and maybe it goes beyond assistance, but... It can't replace people. We bring something else. We bring human experience. We, we bring relatability. We evoke adoration and idolization. What about Maeve? What's a Maeve? It's your classic South Korean K-pop band that they don't exist. We are Maeve. Maeve don't get tired. They Maeve something different. Maeve don't ruin brand sponsorships with racist outbursts. The new era in the music industry. Maeve don't complain about their meager cut of Spotify streams, and Maeve can complete a 100 stadium world tour in two hours. How are you going to beat that? Well, Nick, I never thought I'd say this, but you're right. You win. What, really? No, you f idiot. This isn't AI-generated music. This is human-made music with an AI aesthetic. It's an interesting melding of music, innovative metaverse marketing, and AI character creation, but the music is very much human. Of course AI has a place in music, it has a place in everything. But it's just a piece of the puzzle. Maeve are a great example of AI being put to more creative uses than type in box and make it sound. Maeve are a great example of why you're completely wrong. Up until now, it's all been about augmentation or enhancement. We've used technology to elevate ourselves, to make us bigger and better. That's the trend. 
And musicians will, of course, continue to collaborate with AI and any other useful emerging tech. What you're talking about isn't assistance, it's replacement. It might make sense financially, but to the consumer, music is more than money. The consumer is looking for something else, something to feel. Maybe you grew up wanting to make elevator music or background shit for YouTube videos. Stuff that isn't intended to inspire or make you feel anything. Maybe this is just all you have to offer. So if you're in the business of filling silence, then yeah, maybe you are in trouble. Everyone else will be just fine. Yeah, well, what would you know? This is just the beginning. We're barely even scratching the surface. You just give it time. Look, I'm a visionary. Haters come with the territory. But I didn't get zapped through a portal to spend my afternoon taking shit from some dinosaur in a infinitely warping dimension. Guys, can we calm down Yeah, a bit? well, you should have thought of that before you came in with such a poorly put together argument. You'll have to have ChatGPT write you a better one next time. Until then, enjoy your dominance of the world of telephone hold music and let the real artists get on with what they do best. You know, art. Yeah, like, you know, real art. Those who can do, those who can't, DJ. Yeah, good luck with the portal, Ed. Return journey can be a little bumpy. Right, that is enough of all this Robopop bollocks. Let's slow things down a little. With some real, authentic, homegrown, grass-fed, human-made music. This is Kraftwerk.